Okay, we're back here live. This is theCUBE. This is uh, SiliconANGLE's uh, program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. And I'm here with Courtney Nash, editor at O'Reilly Media. O'Reilly Media is putting on this conference, the Fluent Conference, which is really targeting the developer community, the JavaScript world, jQuery, .NET, Ruby, all the different aspects of how JavaScript and the developer community on the front end, user experiences, is expanding their horizons, increasing their capabilities, new protocols, new standards. It's really where all the action is, and, and there's a lot of exciting things here happening at Fluent, and uh, again, this is where all the actions for developers we're covering two days, and my next guest here, we're going to talk a little bit about how that intersects with kind of what powers the developers, and that is ultimately the cloud, infrastructure, tools, technologies. What's under the covers, what's under the hood is really what's driving Courtney Nash as editor of uh, O'Reilly Media covering the velocity market segment. Not necessarily the conference, they're putting the conference together, but you have, a, you have to have the 20 mile stair, the wide deep, what kind of the beachhead of the marketplace. Welcome yep. to theCUBE. Thanks, it's nice to be here. So one of the things at theCUBE we like to do is just kind of lean back and let some ideas flow, but also talk specifics around what's happening in the marketplace so folks watching can learn a little bit about kind of how things are connecting. The Fluent Conference is a developer conference, and the, you know, we had Brady Forrest on yesterday, who's an amazing guy doing some great stuff. I, and he said he made a quote. I, we haven't had an Amazon Web Services moment yet in his world, which is essentially the Internet of Things, the Maker Fair. But the Amazon impact of the developer community, really, with the public cloud, has been really amazing. And the guys here at the conference and gals here are really exploiting that capability and doing new things. So that that whole generation shift to you know data centers, to cloud, to new software techniques, virtualization, all this stuff is the the meat and the potatoes, the technology under the hood yep. that's powering here the developers of Fluent. So you got to look at that. So what's your take on the intersection of Fluent, Connect Fluent and the Velocity Conference, which is which is coming up on, by the way, to plug for you guys on uh, in Santa Clara, June 18th, 20th. That's right. So the, the Velocity Conference is about speed and power on the web. And, and, and this came out of a need. Steve Sowers is one of the, the co-chairs for the Velocity Conference took a look at the landscape of the web at some point and said, how do we make this thing faster? And, 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 the, and the, the influx of mobile devices and all kinds of devices, people's expectations for how quickly things should happen online or on your device or on your tablet are continually going up. And so the speed of what people are delivering online needs to match those expectations. And, and there's, real, there's real revenue involved in this. And I think that's where the interesting piece that, of Fluent and Velocity coming together. You can talk about tools, you can talk about libraries. If your site is slow, you're going to lose money. Um, but Bing and, uh, and Google actually got together and did a, a study where they, they intentionally slowed the web down. I don't know if anybody noticed this when it happened. Um, and they found that a, a two second delay or a two second slow down in search results had something like a 4.3% revenue per user impact. Um, and the Obama campaign is a great example of this. They, they, they geared for speed. They designed out of the gate for speed. And they had a 60% faster site, and that was something like 14% increase in donations for the campaign. So speed is money. Um, and that's, a, that's really where I think that Fluent and you know, where the, the developer world connects with some serious fiscal reality. And what I like about the program and, and your job is that it's not just cloud, no. it's not just mobile, it's not just social, it's a system. It's a holistic, the future, or what we're, world we live in, it's operating environment. You yes. called users and, and, and software developers. So, so talk about this speed thing, because like, what does that mean? I mean, I'll say one trend that, that uh, we've all been covering is DevOps. DevOps has evolved very fast. Right. Now that's actually being kicked around in mainstream marketplace and the enterprises and, and kind of no one really knows what it means, but you have a developer and operations, which is classic. Right. You have the cloud guys, you have private cloud. How does a, how does a person out there understand the velocity marketplace that you're mentioning? Is it, is it one thing? Is it holistic? What's your take on that? I think of the velocity marketplace as one thing, but I think the reality is it's still a fairly fragmented mar marketplace. If you go to the Velocity Conference, you talk to people who are talking about DevOps, um, which is really about breaking down silos that people work in today. Um, that all makes sense to me. That's all one world, They're all, and people are all trying to deliver an experience that works well for people. But the reality is there's still a lot of silos out there. Um, and and the, I've always thought of the DevOps side as almost being more about the stronger aspect of Velocity. So we talk about faster and stronger with Velocity too. So it's not just speed, but you have to have, you have, to have a base on which 
you can go fast. You know, you can't you can't put your hoopty on the freeway and go 90 miles an hour. The thing's going to fall apart. The wheels are going to come off. Right, yeah. you're going to have problems. So the, the strength is the foundation of the speed, and 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 the DevOps piece is really about people. It, it's a cultural phenomenon. It's people looking at it and saying, why isn't our organization working well? Why is it taking us um, six weeks or two months or you know years to roll out features? and looking at the people that are actually the part of that technolo technology organization. And when you can smooth that stuff out, you can make your operational environment faster, you can make your website faster, your mobile web faster. So that's what, that's what I see the DevOps piece as being, but it's it's kind of a buzzword now, I'd say, almost. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, people don't all know really what it means. And, and I saw your eyes rolled when I said this. I, I don't yeah. mean to roll, I love. No, no, it's just one <laughs> aspect of a bigger picture. Yeah. It's one pillar. I'm, I'm a DevOps enthusiast, as people <laughs> say, no doubt there, but um, it is, it is a piece of, of that velocity culture and that velocity world that people are just starting to get their arms around. You know, it's interesting. What I love about the O'Reilly Conference is that there's a lot of intersections between multiple what I call pure play market segments. So strata, you know, straddles a different bunch of different markets. Velocity, you're talking DevOps, which is strength. You have this virtualization. You have cloud. You have mobile. Um, all, and you got speed, all these things, strength and agility and speed, kind of make a big deal. Yeah. Um, so i got to ask you about a couple key trends that and let's say are, are, are emerging, I'm not necessarily sure they're pure play segments, but obviously I wrote a post yesterday on, on Forbes that we post to and, and um, talking about NetApp and Silicon Valley, and they're really transforming around software-defined storage, which is a buzzword that's popped out because when Nasira got bought by VMware for a billion dollars, um, they only had $50 million of venture from Andreessen Horowitz, yep. everyone took notice, this software-defined networking trend has mm -hmm. taken hold. So now it's software-defined networking, software-defined storage, software-defined data center. Everything is code. Everything is code. Infrastructure is code is yep. a term that we've been kicking around on orchestration. Yep. There's a lot of serious stuff going on around this area, but software is the key to it. Yes. And so how do you look at that? I mean, because you have to kind of vet, I mean, is that infrastructure, it's a hardware box from Cisco, Juniper, whoever, but where's the software? Do you look at the software piece and how do you, how would you share your perspective on the uh, software-defined movement, or? I don't know if I look at it in, the, in that way that you're thinking about, um, and what, what I actually think is more interesting about, about the Velocity world is that Velocity is starting to look at, and, and has organizations that are looking at the boundaries of, of humans and software. So, so when you said everything is software, I, I, I nodded, and then I, I thought, well, actually, I don't agree with that entirely, um, because you know, the singularity is not approaching, as John Oswald likes to say, everything will not all be software, and there are these intersections of people and software, and you can't ignore that. You ignore those at your peril, I guess. You know, you can't automate everything. Software is not going to solve all of your problems. Yeah. Um, There's process issues, right? I mean, you know, we were on the cube at Strata. Dave Vellante, my co-host, is not here. Said, people focus on the container, not necessarily the process. Yeah. So again, there's people dynamics. There's it's not just human; it's also organizational. Yeah, absolutely. Are you and that's finding a, that? That's a very strong theme that comes out of Velocity. Um, I think we've heard some of it here at Fluent. You know, we've heard some of the keynotes. People have been talking about those things. You can't, you don't get work done without other people. Um, and and what I really like about about the conference in particular, um, as a, as a view into this into this world and this market is. Unlike other conferences, even other O'Reilly conferences, um, Velocity has a history of sharing our mistakes, and, you know, of sort of showing the warts off of using failure as a learning tool. Um, and so I, I like to joke that failure actually is an option, even though that's a, sort of our tagline for Velocity is that failure is not an option. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so people are building failure into their software now, right? Yeah. So Netflix has the Simeon Army or like Chaos Monkey. They, intentionally take their systems down in production and as a developer you have to try to develop towards that right yeah, yeah absolutely so, I, I, when I look at software I can't not look at the people side of it to be perfectly honest. so web uh, velocity is a conference it's going to be in June uh, their web performance and operations conference that's what the tagline is and are the con focuses and the tagline is building a fast stronger web so we check the box we promo the velocity conference let's step back and talk about kind of the marketplace um, you're out there as an editor you you're talking to a lot of um, stakeholders, partners, customers, end users, developers, programmers, et cetera. What are the biggest challenges and, and, and opportunities that are facing uh, folks as they look at the landscape of what Velocity looks into? What, are the, what do you see as the biggest challenges and, and yet the opportunities? Well, I think what's interesting is that the web is only marginally getting faster. 
right? So I think everyone would agree it should get faster. We need to respond to what, what customers and users want. But the reality is the, the people who've been driving the increases in speed on the web in, in a lot of ways have been the browser and the, and the ISP folks, right? So browsers are doing a lot of browser, you know, you know manufacturers are, are doing a lot to make browsers faster. And, and, all, and you, you, know, you see all the commercials now about faster is better, right? On the ISP side too, right? So all of the cellular providers are doing a lot. But at the developer level, things aren't really getting faster. Um, and I, and I, th I found that was really fascinating. Steve Souders just put out a, a big summit about this, or a big summary about this. And there's a lot still that developers can be doing to make their sites faster. They have a lot of control that they're not taking advantage of yet. Um, and so, and I think video is going to be a big, a big piece of that, that, that we're seeing, right? So you're looking at, uh, at page weight over year over year. Like, are, are websites getting bigger? Are they getting smaller? They're getting bigger. We're yeah. at developers add there's so much you can do with JavaScript now, right? So much flexibility, so much customization. Yeah. But our page weights and it's are and it's bigger. not monolithic anymore. It's decentralized, right? Yeah. So right. you got social you got, media, you got social third networks. Party stuff that's coming in, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the social media thing's interesting with Hadoop. We saw at Strata is that yeah, you collect data. How do you put that stuff back in? You're only taxing the infrastructure. But we were just talking to some folks at EMC, the EMC world, and I'm like, the guy who runs the big drives, the ones that are quote being killed by the open source, their business is up. People are still buying more storage. Yeah. Right. So the roads are getting clogged more and more clogs. Uh, exactly. You know, so so that's a big issue. So. Uh, what do people do about it? I mean, the enterprise is an area we also cover, and they're kind of still in, in the old days. I mean, they're, they're modernizing, and it's clearly a mandate. You guys are seeing that, we're seeing that, modernizing this modern era of infrastructure. Right. I mean, where do you tweak it? You got, it's like an airplane at 3,000, 3,000, feet. How do you change the engine out? It is, it is, and I, and I think enterprise is, is an area for velocity that has a lot of challenges, um, but a lot of opportunity. Uh, Bill Scott's keynote this morning at, at Fluent I thought was really, um, spoke to this phenomenon really well. And, and I'm going to come back, to, I'm going to pound this drum again, but you can't change the technology in an organization without changing the culture, without changing the people. Um, but I think if, if, if a larger enterprise can figure out what those business metrics are, what, those, what their users need, they can start tying that back to what they need out of the technology. Eventually, you can start you know, switching up. And there, there is hope for change in, in enterprise with this kind of stuff. I really, I really believe there is. We're here with Courtney Nash, she's the editor at O'Reilly Media, talking about the velocity landscape with the conference coming up, and um, but it's the landscape of the world, and it's uh, you know it's the flat world as we say, and certainly the tech business is going to be more software driven, whether it's a, a thermostat from Nest or something cool that uh, Brady Forrest invests in. Um, but we had a guest on earlier today talking about here at Fluent about JavaScript, blah 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 blah, you know the stuff we're we're talking about. I want to tie it to a question for you in Velocity's uh, world, and. The comment was two comments. One was the theme of Fluent is the web, the web, the web. Right. Um, most people think, oh, web and mobile, different methodologies, maybe and agile. You have different, you know, app stores, different distribution, different business models. At the end of the day, it's still the web. In fact, yep. Jeff Frick and I were, were were discussing and debating agile methodology in mobile versus uh, uh, web. People on Twitter are talking about responsive design, right. and so on and so forth. So that was kind of a cool check. I think we all agree it's the web. Yes. Then the other comment he made was the biggest concern of uncharted territory is performance on mobile. So I got to ask you, with Velocity, how do you see that agenda coming into that mobile, landscape? Mobile is becoming a much bigger deal for Velocity than it was a year or two. Um, there is an actual mobile track at the conference now, um, and from a you know just from a larger marketplace landscape. I think people are really starting to pay attention to us. There's there's fundamental things, like you said, the mobile is the web, web is, is mobile. There are fundamental things that you should be doing across both of those, but there are obviously significant challenges. It's, in pretty, it's pretty inefficient right now. One, it's exploding it, it, in growth, so you have yes. growing pains, right? Right. You know? Yeah, well, and there's things you, that are harder for you to control, um, right? You know, you can, you, latency, ultimately, um, you know, Ilya Grigoric gave a really great talk, a uh, workshop earlier at Fluent here, you, you, you can't control the speed of light. Like you, you run up against certain barriers. Yeah, physics. Um, physics um, <laughs> are, are sort of difficult to defy in that front. Um, but there are things that people can be doing to optimize for mobile. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned responsive design, and that's definitely going to be a big focus for the conference, and also just for, for yeah. us in terms of publishing. And, and, and then on the big data out. side, I think there's some big data angle where you can look at it and saying with Flash, 
uh, Fusion.io or Violin, these companies are building kind of great caching layers for open source software. Yeah. I think that's cool. Virtualization is kind of changing, morphing. Absolutely. Hypervisors being commoditized, seeing a lot more different software things. So a lot of cool things happening. Um, but I want to ask you kind of the, as, the, as the parting question is just your thoughts on What's uncharted in the velocity area? What are you seeing as an editor? You have to kind of keep an eye on things, the normal areas. I got to kind of watch that community. I got to watch the community. So outside of the known areas on the radar, right. what are you watching personally that you got your eye on that's not yet baked out or revealed itself that you think is going to be a trigger? Well, I mentioned I mentioned the topic of failure, um, and I and I think that's tied to a certain degree to this idea of risk, and um, a lot of interesting people are in academia are starting to look at risk and risk models and how do you model risk and I think there is um, there's some really interesting stuff coming down the pike if you take more academic and theoretical models of risk and start applying them to your systems to your front-end systems to your person you know to your people systems um, to your operational systems and uh, to a certain degree embracing risk and and having a different model of of resilience of what your site should do. Um, so instead of having these bulletproof, bomb-proof kind of sites, how do you have sites that can flex with um, with sort of chaos and and things that you, you simply cannot plan for? There's a there's a lot of interesting things happening there, and I would say that that's a couple years out for people to start figuring out what's going the on. The adaptive there. learning machine, learning software. Yeah, you know? well, it's sort of you know yes, yeah, site websites and entire systems that are. Um, that are not so not so fragile and that are, are more resilient. There's that's a, that's a, a model of thinking that I think is only starting. It's on the fringe still for people who are just right now trying to figure out how do they optimize their JavaScript. Yeah. Very very relevant focus. Um, love it. Love the just in summary. Fast and speed is the velocity. Being strong. Um, but what what you just talked about was systems, people, organizations, and technology, and doing new things yeah. holistically. Um, check out the Velocity Conference with O'Reilly Media, a lot of great stuff. And again, it's the intersection, it's the confluence of many things coming together. This is what our world is like now. I mean, it's not one, it's not a one trick pony for off the shelf software, general purpose computing. All this is kind of converging in. It's an exciting time and we'll keep on covering it here at O'Reilly Media and, and the Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest. Courtney, thank you for coming on the Cube. Stay tuned, keep watching. We'll hear all for the rest of the day live on the Cube. We'll be right back.